what's special about it today? It's Halloween. It's a national American pastime where uh, once a year, even people who are stingy and uptight give to others. And what do they give? They give they give three of the primary American food groups: sugar and fat, generally speaking. What's what's the third one of the American primary American food groups? Sugar, fat, and you don't give meat away, though. Sugar, fat, and caffeine, in three American food groups, which you can, you could actually get the American food groups, all of them, at Starbucks, one location. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drinkable, hot mocha, caffeine, chocolate, fat, sugar. It's everything you need for a healthy American diet. Well, let's take the word healthy out. Everything you need for an American diet. That's my Halloween shtick. I just made it up. It's pretty good, huh? I give it like an eight. Of scale 10. So, commentary. I'll, I know you guys are evaluating me, so I'll do it in my own way too. And I'll speak it out loud. How did Halloween start? Huh? Yeah, what a crazy tradition, right? Like, how do you think Halloween came about? Well, there's a lot of history to it, then and then. It's the corporation. They're giving you one more excuse to buy stuff, right? The more holidays they give you, the more reasons you have to buy things. I don't know how Halloween came about. You could, of course, probably find a YouTube video which talks about it or look it up on Wikipedia, but that's not why we're here. We are going to watch the Civilization Starter Kit, which we uh, talked about a little bit, right? On Monday. So I thought, sweet, let's check it out. It's only a four minute and 30 second video, so you guys might feel a little short change. But then we'll do our, uh, we'll talk about websites. Website? Talk about websites today. How to make websites. What do you need to do to make websites? You are not going to learn to be awesome website programmers by the end of this class. (laughs) It is such a hairball. But I will tell you, the, the path to glory, web programming glory. You will know the path to web programming glory by the end of this class. If you want to create websites and be like, ruler of the universe, rule the universe from your mom's garage, by the end of this class, you'll know the path. Here's Civilization Starter Kit. One of his delights, please. You can say no, and then I'll walk over. You don't want that job. Let's do them all. Awesome! Because if I don't do them all, then when I look at this video, it's like really dark. You just hear it, see a silhouette of me talking. And I know people really want to see my beautiful face. So let's put some light on it. Face expressions are a lot, right? The non nonverbal communication. Uh, I got a little chocolate left for those of you. I wanted to make sure it made it all the way around for those of you who may have wanted a little more Celestina. Uh, so if you want a little more chocolate, just let me know. Celestina, no. Just let me know. Mm-hmm. I can see you. Yeah, I like wanted. chocolate. It's like candy. That's why it's always so great. It's all sugar. This is, uh, this is not any ordinary chocolate. I hope you know it's like that. Hershey's dark chocolate. No, this chocolate is in a class by itself. This is like, this is the best chocolate you could buy in the world. Like, Swiss mint companies, like, they, they're known for the best chocolate. When these people are, like, picked through all their beans, their cacao beans, right, and they, like, we don't want any of those, the Swiss come and buy them first grade. They use the even better stuff. It's called Kalari. So good, you can't even buy it in town. You have to buy it off the internet. K-A-L-L-A-R-I. I think I've talked to you guys about this before. You should learn a little bit of everything I, in this class. I would have remembered to talk about yeah, You should totally. This is the best chocolate in the world. Do you want some more? Yes, please. Oh, awesome. Here, the rest of I here. Have manners. Thank you. That's good. It took me a while to learn mine. Uh, so, pretty cool video. Do it yourself. I got a big chunk of chocolate in my mouth, so why don't you guys tell me uh, what your thoughts on it? Cool. It's cool.
There's an interesting way to revolutionize the cultures that don't have that much resources to be able to track to and cost a bunch of money. Yeah. Yeah, that makes me want to like take the welding class here at City College so that I can start making some of that stuff. And then once you've taken the welding class and you can make some of that stuff, you could go to like India and you could be like the god in a village of 20, 30,000, like bringing prosperity to the village, like let's make tractors. <laughs> let's get to farming. I don't know. Just fancy. Not an idea. So the entire do it DIY, do it yourself thing. You heard that phrase, DIY. You also heard uh, open source. So that's a concept we've already learned about. Open source. It's weird to try to talk with chocolate or not. I should have taken that bite. All right. So enough shouting that. Here's your uh, chapter 11 key term. If you open the box up very carefully, right here on that scene, so it's open here. It's a great little story. I actually met some of the people from that. Oh, I learned about it. It was a presentation they did at Fresno State. But you got chocolate. Yeah, I'm good. That's all you need. Thanks, sir. I walked past you, so I stopped by. All right, so websites. Relatively new invention. Didn't come around until uh, 19, mid-90s. I was living on the North Shore of Hawaii, 1996. I was 25. I wanted to just wait tables. Uh, so I could surf, right? Surf during the day, go to work at 4 or 5, work until 10, get a free meal, make some money, go back, go to bed, wake up, surf. All day. Go back to work 4 or 5. It sounded like a good life. Have two days off when I could just like travel around and surf. Living on the North Shore of Hawaii. And uh, they didn't have a, uh, I couldn't find a waiter position. So they said, oh, you, you graduated from college. Do you want to be the manager? That was a little bit too much responsibility. <laughs> it was more responsibility than I was looking for. So for two to three months, I was the manager of this restaurant. <laughs> and the reason I'm telling you the story, 1996, I was 25, not much older than some of you. I was lost. I, I went to college and I got my bachelor's degree in economics. Why economics? Not because I was passionate about it. Not because, yeah, I love it. This is what I want to do with my life. I, I got it because it was the fastest way out of college. <laughs> so what I have to do to get out of here as quickly as I can? She said, well, looks like economics would be the fastest route for you. So what are you interested in? I don't know, business, maybe be a doctor. Well, if you're a doctor, it's going to take you another so many years. If you uh, just want to do economics, you can be out of here in three semesters. Sweet, let's do that. Bad call, right? But also interesting. I found it interesting. And uh, so I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I almost joined the Air Force. And by the way, we had a guest speaker in here yesterday, right? Obviously, kind of lame bringing the same guest speaker two days in a row. Well, not lame for you guys, lame for the guest speaker. We had a guest speaker in here on Tuesday, two of them. We had Sergeant Lindsay and uh, Sergeant, or Sergeant Ortiz from the United States Army. Uh... So I made a little recording of uh, their talk that they gave in class, and I called this recording, Should I Join the Army? And uh, I know I'm giving you guys a little bit of a roundabout, but I kind of like storytelling. And uh, so if you're interested in like, oh, what are the career opportunities if you go to the military? Amazing opportunity. You'll be given a ton of responsibility. You'll be given a lot of really good training. You might also get a report, or you could also get a really crappy job. You get a really crappy job like washing windows on jets and howling wind on an aircraft carrier. Right? And there's somebody who got that job and their hands are cracking. Um, but you might also get shot. Or you might have to shoot people. Because that's kind of what the entire thing is about. It used to be called the War Department. Just hang in with me. I know I'm kind of like just doing a big arc here. It used to be called the War Department. Then it became the Defense Department. I'm guessing in a few years they might be changing the name to the Peacekeeping Department. 
right? It's just kind of funny the way they call things. Like we have a, right now we have smart scheduling. That's a phrase that's going around here in where I work. Uh, I think it's a great phrase, but. Um, so I thought, well, when I got done with my degree, maybe I'll join the Air Force. And I decided not to. And uh, I traveled around a little bit, and I ended up in Hawaii, and I like Hawaii because I like surfing. And 1996, working at this restaurant, that was the first time I learned about email and websites. All right? I'm not even sure I learned about websites. The internet. I learned about the internet. So I don't know how much. I'm pretty sure I learned about email, maybe websites. In 1996. And I decided I was going to go to grad school because I wanted a little bit more opportunity. I don't know why I made that choice. And uh, life has a direction all its own sometimes. And so I came back here and I went to Fresno State. And from 97, fall, spring, fall of 97, spring of 90, 98, no, uh, fall of 96, spring of 97, fall of 97, spring of 98, I got my MBA out of Fresno State. And uh, did well. I got straight A's. But when I was out there, the internet was just starting. The World Wide Web was just starting to me, to the rest of the world. The internet had actually been around since when? We've talked about this. The 60s or 70s. Yeah, yeah, the late 60s. The internet was created by DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, in the 60s to uh, enable communications in the event of nuclear war. Enable communications in the event of nuclear war. We already talked about that, right? So instead of a, a switch network, a circuit network where one circuit was created, we went to a packet switching network, switch network where it could just find its own way through various switches. So, and then uh, the World Wide Web began, began when? So the internet was in the late 60s. When did the World Wide Web begin? This is the foundation. Uh, 92, 93, Tim Berners-Lee created the World Wide Web. He is working at CERN, and CERN stands for European Nuclear Research Center, or something like that. I don't know. Center of European Research Nuclear, something like that. And, uh, and so, you know, people can send each other text documents back and forth across the internet. They can send text documents. But then those text documents would get unwieldy, because there's no formatting to the text. So you just get a big page of text. So Tim Berners-Lee said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could format the text, it'd be easier to read. So as I'm sending research you know, out to other physicists, you know, it's, it's got like different heading sizes and things like that, just ba basic markup, right? And so he created HTML, hypertext markup language, hypertext markup language, he created HTML. And uh, so HTML can take text and it can mark it up. And we already looked at this, right? We already looked at HTML a little bit. I'll show you again in a second. And uh, so when you when you now send a text document to somebody else, it wasn't just the text that you and I are going to read, but certain tags were put around the text. This text here, from here to here, let's make that bold. So you'd have the bold tag from one side of that text to another side. Let's make you know this text italics. So you'd have the italic text. So. You no longer were the first, you, weren't, you no longer looked at all of the text that came to you. What, 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 uh, what would happen is Tim Berners-Lee also created this program called a browser. So when you received this text document, text document, that's all it was, the browser would then read it and interpret it and display the page with its markup, right? So you would then see just the human text and you wouldn't see the tag. And, uh, but the tags would format that text that was intended for humans in more visually consumable ways. Right? So again, it comes down to that thing we were talking about, content and form. Right? At first there was just content, and it had only one expression of form, which is a straight text. You know, no bold, no italics, nothing. No headings, nothing. Right? And then he said, well, let's, let's, let's give it more form. Let's be able to mark it up. And when we send that, the browser will then read it and show you the display version, right? So, just so that we're clear on that entire process, let's uh, see a little bit of how 
web pages are created. Microsoft Office, I'm just going to go into Word. And uh, let's say I have a document here, and I'm going to call my document uh, The Shiny. And I'm writing a book. And, and what do I want to say in this book? I think I want to say um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And, you know, I'm just going to say that many times. <laughs> All right, so there's the beginning of my novel. So in the, in the original days of the web, this is what it looked like. Somebody send you text, you just get text. There's no formatting to it. All right? And then uh, Tim Berners-Lee said, well, let's create this markup language. We'll call it hypertext. Hypertext markup language. Why did he use the phrase hypertext? Tell me if I'm being too pedantic. Am I going too slow? Let me see the hands if I'm going too slow. Let me see the hands if, oh, I'm liking this story. Okay. Good. Why did he call it hypertext? Because it was hyper! Because he was like getting on the American diet where he ate sugar, fat, and caffeine. And he didn't sleep and he just coded all the time. No. She's been in the interview all day since six or so. Um, why, why, why did he call it hypertext? Because there were hyperlinks. There were hyperlinks within the text. What's a hyperlink? Huh? A hyperlink is a text when you click it or something when you click it, it takes you to another place. So a couple of phrases you're getting here. HTML, hypertext markup language, right? Why is it called hypertext? Because it has hyperlinks in it, hyperlinks. And that's, that was a really revolutionary concept. So you could read a document, you could say, instead of like, oh, and go see this book to read more about the research, you'd say, click this link, and you could be taken right to that guy's research. You could be taken to another location on this internet thing, right? So you could put a hyperlink into it. All right. So the markup language, how did the markup language work? I'm just going to make this really big so that we can see it, right? We still know what it was. We'll shrink it back down. All right. So the way the hypertext markup language worked is you have opening and closing tags. So at the beginning of an HTML document, you got HTML, hypertext markup language. And then at the end of the document, I'm just going to page down to the end of the document, you need to close that tag, meaning here's the end of that tag. And so you close it with a little slash, forward slash HTML. So all tags have an opening and a closing, all HTML tags have opening and closing tags, generally speaking. So if I wanted to make this bold right here, I'd say, hey, make that bold. And you got to learn what all the notation is for each of these little tags. And I say, OK, that's where I want the bolding to end. So I put that tag on like that. So now, right, if I was to save this document, file save as, first I'm just going to save it as a Word document so I can come back to it. Now I'm going to save it as uh, to my desktop. Same thing, so I know where it is, sorry. Now I'm going to save it once more, and this time I'm going to call it page, web page. And I'm just going to save it as a text document. And it's okay if you don't get all the movements here. So web page saved as a text document. Find whatever kind of text I want. And, uh, and now I'm going to come to my desktop and look at my desktop in Windows Explorer. So right click start, choose Windows Explorer. And on my desktop, I can now hold down Alt T to bring up this drop down menu. I know I'm just blazing through stuff. It's okay if you aren't getting it. And Alt, Alt T brings up tools. I could go to folder options. I could go to view. I could say, hey, don't hide extensions for known file types. Hit OK. And now when I go to detail view here, I know it's a lot. Don't freak out. I can now see the file extensions. TXT tells me it's a text document right there. Right? And I can change that now. I can say, hey, make that a HTML document. Yeah, you really want to change it? I do. I really want to change it. 
And it's saying you can't because that's already open. So I'm going to close this. And now try again. And now change. And now the icon changed to Internet Explorer, which means it will open in a browser. So when I open this in a browser, I am no longer going to see these tags here. And these tags are is the text that gets sent to me. Those tags are the text that gets sent to me from a, a, web, a website. When I ask for, oh, send me this web page, it sends me all this text with all these tags in it. I'll show you that source code in a second. All right? But I'm no longer going to see that when I open that in a web browser because when I open it in a web browser, the browser is going to now render or interpret all of those tags and format the text and not show me the, the tags if all works well. See, the shining is bold. Hallelujah. 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 Like, that's amazing. That's amazing. Right? We went from stupid unformatted text now we can form it, format it. Like Leonard Cohn needs to like put this into his song. Right? You've, you've heard his song, Hallelujah? You haven't? You haven't? YouTube it. Leonard Cohn, Leonard Cohn, Hallelujah. A little cultural edification. So you get too much chocolate in me, I get a little random. Leonard Cohn, Hallelujah. There you go. Maybe I'll even play it for you at the end of class. It's a cool song. So, how else can I format this? Well, hell, I want to break that up into paragraphs. I want to break that up into paragraphs. So I'm going to come down here, open up my HTML document again. I'm going to say, you know what, baby? Let's have a paragraph right there. Let's have a paragraph right there. And let's end the paragraph right there. Right? Because you saw that in the HTML... Whoop, you saw in the HTML... Oh, I closed it already. You saw in the HTML document, right? It just did it, all the text just glumped it together because there's no other tags in there saying what to do with it. So it said, oh, the rest of the text is all together. It didn't see it like Microsoft Word, right? It just saw, oh, it's just all text, clump it together. It doesn't start to create paragraphs until I put in the coding, the markup language, the markups that tell, that tell browsers, hey, this is a paragraph. All right, so let's save this. We saved it as the Word doc, right? And now we're going to save it as our text file again. And you know what? In here, I can even save it as a web page right there. So I don't have to do that step to text. I can save in Microsoft Word as a web page. But when I do that, I think it throws in a bunch of other junky code. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to save it as a text. Ah, crap. I'm not on my desktop. I need a file, save as to my desktop, there we go, as the Word document, and now file, save as, uh, to my desktop, as the text document, save it, okay, go here, go here, and delete this first one, right, webpage.html, was that what I called it? I did it when I first saved it, just get rid of that, because here's the new one. It's, it's called HTML now. And we're going to, we'll call it web page two, whatever. Oh, I need to close Microsoft Word. Close, right? Because it won't let me change it if it's open. And uh, I'm just going to change it to the HTML extension. So it's called HTML, HTML, whatever. It's fine. Are you sure you want to change it? Yeah. Now I open it. <gasps> Hallelujah. 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 All right. That's amazing. So, how do you learn those tags? So, you could just, you, you just, you know, you go, you may have any questions, thoughts, concerns. Okay. How do you learn those tags? You go to Google and I don't like Internet Explorer. You go to Google and you uh, say, hey, I want to learn basic HTML. Basic HTML, HTML basic, and uh, HTML basic, basic HTML page. There we go. So examples right here. All right, a very simple HTML document. So I open that up, 
And here it is. You saw me use, you saw me use the HTML tag. Can I zoom in on that? Ah, oh, love it. You saw me use the HTML tag, so there's the opening tag and the closing tag. You saw me use the paragraph tag, right? Well, here's this other tag, heading one, right? Where I could use that tag. And then there's this body tag, right? There's the opening tag for the body, and that's the body of the document. Because there's also an area called the header, the header of the document, where you can put in things like the title, the title of this document. And the title is going to show up like on your tab, right? That's where you, that's pulled from the title, and so it knows I'll put the title there, okay? That's, that's HTML. So this is a really good little source right here for learning, you know, uh, what did I Google? Basic HTML page. So here's HTML headings, right? So there, and the headings are different than the header area. Paragraphs, links, ah, link, right? So here's the code for a link. So I could copy that code, and I could go back. Here, let me show people in my class, online class. There's a link. There's the, it's called an anchor tag for whatever reason, right? And then there's the end. And that's a hyperlink. So there's the hyperlink. So I could go back to my Word document on my desktop. And let me open up my Word document. And I could say uh, right here, I want to make work, okay? Uh, no, I'll make Jack. I'll make Jack. I'm going to do an anchor tag, anchor href, anchor href equal quote, quote, anchor href equal quote, HTTP hypertext transfer protocol. So we learned about protocols, yeah? And protocols are what? What are protocols? Like a systematic way of like doing something, like how you're set up. Like sure, that's how, that's how we know protocols, systematic way of doing something. In computers, when you hear somebody talk about protocols, what are they talking about? What do they talk about when they talk about protocols? <laughs> somebody, tell me. Didn't I use this example in class? Oh, yeah, like, I don't know. They are rules of what? Like rules of conduct. Communication. Communication. So you always hear about protocols in networking, transferring data between places. What are the rules of communication? Yeah, yeah. It's ringing a little. You have a little, it's coming back a little. People, people, people. Young today, uh, just like when I was young. <laughs> All right, so HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And actually, it's been so long since I've written code, I just want to look at this to make sure I'm doing it right. And, 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 yeah, all right. So HTTP colon, whack whack, www.stephenking.com, and then uh, in quotes, and then in anchor. Ah, Microsoft Word decided to turn that into hyperlink itself. I'm just going to bring that up here. Get rid of that. There we go. And now uh, I'm going to bring Jack up here. And then after Jack, I'm going to end the link. So there, there's the end of the link right there. So here's the beginning of the link, anchor tag, right? And that's the beginning tag, the opening tag. Here's the closing tag. And this is all nested within the paragraph tag. So you start nesting tags, and they got to go in and go out, cascade in and cascade out. All right? Open a paragraph, have some text, do my anchor link inside for a hyperlink, and then uh, close the anchor link and then close the paragraph. So sometimes you'll see programmers. Eight, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that one right now because those don't work that well for this uh, example. So now I'm going to save this file, save as. And save it to my desktop and save it, yay. And file, save as, and save it as a text document. And save it to my desktop. And we'll call it web page. Just so, just so, you know, we could call it whatever we wanted. And then I'm gonna go into here. 
and delete that page, and I'm going to change the file extension on this one to HTML. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? You gonna sing it with me? Oh, I gotta close Word first. You gonna sing it with me? Alleluia, alleluia. Look, there's the link. There's the link. Oh my God, there's the link. Leroy, come look. Can you tell I was already at a Halloween party earlier? <laughs> no, I wasn't. But I got a little chocolate. That makes me loopy. So what happens when we click the link? Whoa. Whoa. We went to Stephen King's web, web page just like, just like we, you know, just like we told the computer. Whoa. Very, you guys can now create web pages with everything I just taught you. And not only like create them, but you're creating them in the hardcore, like I'm a coder way. Like. Does this work with like Excel and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So you could actually, in, in Word or in Excel, you could save as an HTML page. Save it as HTML and there's your page. But it's going to have crazy looking code, dude. So, so watch. Like, let's say I have an Excel deal. All right. Where I just have data. Store. One. And data. Save as HTML web page desktop. There we go. Get out, fine. Get rid of it. Go to desktop. Here it is, HTM. And there it is. It comes up like this, right? Oh, that looks pretty good, right? But if I look at that code, if I right click this and I say open with and I say notepad, Dang! Wow, what is all that code? Can't zoom in on that one. Right? It just wrote like crazy looking code here. But you can see some of the, the same code. It starts out H, HTML, you're going to miss the good stuff. And then there's the header. And then there is, you know, all this stuff in here. I have no idea what it is. And then here is the, whatever, I get lost. What's up? If you go back to the one that you made on Word or whatever, and I think, I don't know if it does it for Internet Explorer, but I know it does it for Chrome. If you like right click anywhere and say view source, will it be exactly like what you put in from Word? Yeah, yeah, so watch. So if I open up this one file web page that I created, let's open it up in a browser, and now I right click here, thank you, and I can say, hey, view source. So in all browsers, you can look at the source code that the browser's looking at, and now here's the HTML, right? There's the bold, there's the paragraph tag, uh, here's the anchor tag, and then there's the paragraph tag, okay? That's exactly what you typed in, basically, right? Yeah, that's exactly what I typed in. So it didn't add anything to it. Browsers do not add anything to it. I create a file with text in it, and markup that the text is also includes markup language, and that file will stay in that file until I change it. All right, browsers will just send it and serve it. And seems like I wanted to say something else about uh, hyperlinks. Ah, uh, I did. Thank you for reminding myself. <laughs> Thank me for reminding myself. All right, so here here is a. Uh, Here's the next thing. So we've, we've learned about tags. These are HTML tags. Now we're going to learn about, and so let's open up our Word doc again. Here it is. We're going to learn about attributes. So in each, in each tag, uh, like here's, here's the tag, and href is actually, this is the anchor tag, and href is actually an attribute, but you need it. Okay. Another attribute uh, I, could, I could add is target, Target equals equals blank. What the heck? 
Wow, I think I need a comma there. It's really been a long time. Uh, so I could even Google that. So let's just find out. Google uh, uh, anchor tag tag attributes, right? Anchor tag attributes. HTML a tag, which I think is kind of interesting. A tag, I won't make that joke, uh, is, uh, so here are my attributes that I could have. And I said, hey, target. Oh, I need an underscore blank. I need an underscore blank. So good thing I checked. I come back here. Target is equal to underscore, for whatever reason, blank. And do I need commas? How do I use it? So I want to look at my examples. Where are my examples, man? Yeah, I want an example. Anchor tag. Uh, tag, anchor tag, link, example. Oh, hey, did that have it? No. Example. Okay, target equal, I need quotes around that and no comma. It's actually a really forgiving kind of deal. So I just do target equal and then I need quotes around that. My quotes are not looking right, but we'll see if it works. So now I'm going to save this as to my desktop, my Word version, save it as to my desktop, my text version, desktop, save, uh, sure, close it. I'm slow learning that today. And uh, here it is, I think, the one I just saved. And we're going to make that HTML. Yeah, and now open it. Wait, nothing looks different. What's different? What does that attribute attribute do? What does that attribute do? Blank. What do you think it might do? Why would I add that in? What was lame about the way it was before? From a design standpoint. Here, here was the way it was before. Okay, looks just the same. You can't even tell that I'm switching between windows. Here's the before version, right? I'm gonna click it. Cool. Here's the after version, right? With the anchor, with the, the target equals blank attribute added to the tag. Okay, watch what happens when I click it. Ooh. What was different? Yeah, opens it in a new tab. Opens it in a new tab. Why would I wanna do that maybe if I'm creating a website? Yeah, because then they'll go, oh, there it is, and then they'll close it, and they're back at my website. And it's all about user retention, because if you got the eyeballs, you got the money. All right, if you get enough people to come to your website, you're making money. All right, so what did we learn? We learned the basics of HTML. We learned about the internet, we learned about where, how the internet started, we learned about the World Wide Web, how it started, we learned a little bit about my own personal history and how I was trying to find my place in the world when I was young. <laughs> and, and the first time that I discovered the internet and the World Wide Web, and then we learned about markup language, but it's called hypertext markup language. We learned why it's called hypertext markup language, hypertext markup language, because it has hyperlinks. And hypertext markup language, you know, instead of just sending text to people, you could now use these tags, and the tags would then, when you got the text, a browser would open the text and it would format the text for you. So you can see formatted text, beautiful paragraphs, bold, headings, uh, and it had hyperlinks in it. So you can link to other resources on the internet and the World Wide Web. And so then people could just go click a link and then take them somewhere else. And then we learned that tags also have attributes. So we can put attributes into them. And then the attributes will... Uh, you know, uh, allow us to adjust the functionality of the tag. So with the anchor tag, we added the attribute target equals blank, and that opens it in a new window, in a new new tab, a new browser. It's all right, you just miss attributes. You can watch the video. So that, that's pretty amazing. So what's a web, we learned how to create a web page. We learned how to create a web page, right? What is a website? What's a website? 
Could you now create a website with this basic knowledge that I've given you? How do you create a website? Yeah, so there's, there's, you have to buy a domain, so there's that stuff. But let's, let's roll it back a little bit. Let's roll it back a little bit. I don't drink, in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> I just happened to be in a good mood. I don't know why. Let's roll it back a little bit. Can you now create a website with what you learned? So is it not a website? Sure, it's a one-page website. I love it, dude. That's like the Zen answer. It is already a website. Where's the truth to be found? Truth is already found. Oh, very wise, grasshopper. Yeah, so you did, websites are usually a collection of pages. So you just create pages, man. You just create pages. That's it. Aren't you limited to just text on it or data? Huh? Aren't you, like, what you're doing, aren't you just limited to, like, text or data, basically, though? Okay, so we're just a, a page with text on it, right? And that's what you're limited to right now? Right now, that's all I've taught you, right? So if you wanted if you wanted to put images into it, you'd have to go to, uh, you know, dang, don't like Internet Explorer. You'd have to go to this HTML place, right, W3 place, and you could say uh, image, HTML, image tag. Right, and then here's the image tag, and then you could you could also have images on your server, right? You could also have images in your website. Let's pull pull back from that word for a second. You could have images in your website, and then that would tell the browser and also pull this image and put the image right here, right? And there's going to be attributes that you can set on your images. So if we actually look at this example they have here, Basic HTML page. I like that link right there. And let's look for the HTML images right here. So here's the image tag. Here's the image tag for this image over on the right. Okay, there's the image tag for that image over on the right. So there's the image tag. And you'll notice the image tag doesn't have a closing tag. So not all tags have closing tags. Because it's not surrounding something. It stands on its own. Does that make sense? Like it's not like, and take the word the and make it an image. Like you'd say, take the word the and make it bold. So begin before the, end after the. Right? So the image tag is just put an image here. But it has attributes. So some of the attributes are height and width. Well, watch what happens when I change the, change the height to 242. 242. And I say, hey, submit the code. And it just stretched that out. You see that stretch out? Watch, I'll show you again. I'm going to change the height to 442. And I'm going to stretch, make smaller so you can see, but watch. Stretched it out, right? So then these are what? These are pixels. That many pixels by that many pixels. Okay, so we learned, we learned how to create basic HTML pages just from text. Taking text and putting markup around it. And then if we get a bunch of those pages, that could be a collection of pages, and that could be a website. And then we connect them all together. All right, so, so here, here's a... Yeah, here's a website I created for my mom. I'm such a good son. This is the last website I ever created. And it was like 2000 and, you know, I was... Uh, I was not waiting tables at the time, but I was living in it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I didn't even create my website. Last time I needed a website for my writing, I was like, no, nah, I don't want to take the time. Right? So I hired somebody to do it. I hired somebody to create my website. Because graphics don't come easy to me. Like, the coding and stuff comes easy, but this graphics stuff, oh my god. Like, just getting all that to work together and look nice, you know. So, kind of cool, huh? For writing, it's just a page, very simple, right? A little whimsical with a little seagull up there, you know. Here's this. So that I'm actually jumping ahead of myself a little bit. So first thing I wanted to say is that a web page, website is a collection of web pages. Website is a collection of web pages. All right, and I'm going to come back to what I was just talking about a second. So here, if you just go to mcclouds.com, you just go to mcclouds.com, 
you get what's called the default page. And as a webmaster, ooh, as a webmaster, you get to say, hey, what's my default page? So you get to change that setting as you start learning about the different pieces of technology that are used for web pages. And you'll learn, learn some of that in a second. You get to say, hey, my default page is called default.html. And so in any directory on your, at your website, right, that will be the default page that's served up. So when I come straight to this website, I get what's the home page, the default page. The default page. Okay. And then there are other pages here, obviously, right? So I could go to this page about buying, and it brings up a different page. I could go to this page about selling, and it brings up a different page. Or I could go to this page to search for new homes, and it brings up a different page. Or I can look at the open houses, brings up yet another one. Or I could go to contact, right? So it's a collection of pages. Collection. You guys should all be really impressed. That's why I'm showing you this. And you're like, wow, that's, that's cool. I don't know what he's doing. How would you do like the transition of pages? You know? like, the transition? Would, yeah, like you, know, you click on the pages and so like, it's there right now. How would you do that? Well, I create each page, and when I say when somebody clicks that word right there, mm -hmm. it takes them to this anchor link tag. It's an anchor it's link like right the there. Pages, but it's just kind of like together. Like, They're anchor. different pages, right? Each of these pages are different, but they all share this in common, this top thing. So it looks... Hyperlink. Yeah, but each of these hyperlinks say, hey, go to... Go to it's just the anchor tag, right? Go to that page. And so up here, you can see the where it's taking them. It's actually saying, bring the page newhomes.cfm. That's what I called the page. Ooh, a CFM. That's different than HTML. You will know shortly. I pique your interest to keep you engaged. Any of that have flash? Yeah, that's got some flash. That's the swing and keys right there. Yeah. All right, so now you just heard a question. Is that a flash? Like, you're about to go down the rabbit hole of hairball confusion. <laughs> right? Like, it's been like, well, this is pretty simple. I could do that. And you can. And now if you want to start making it look sweet and nice, get ready to get on, like, the, the roller coaster ride of endless learning. Right? Because it's always changing. It's a game that's always changing. And to make good-looking websites is an art. You know, and to have good functionality is an art. And so actually genius is in simplicity. You know, and people who can do something really well make it look simple and often strip the bull crap away. Like here is an amazing website. Wimp.com. Because it's stupid simple. It's stupid simple. All they do is they list five videos a day that they like. Right? Like, stupid simple. They've got 1.4 million people following them on Facebook. So if a million people are hitting this page a day, and they're getting a penny for each ad that gets shown, they're getting a million pennies a day. Divide a million by 100, and that's how many dollars they're getting. So if six zeros, and we divide by 100, we go down to four zeros. So they're getting $10,000 a day. If they get one cent, and they get a million visitors, they're getting $10,000 a day. That's where I feel like an idiot. I feel like the idiot. Because it's like, why haven't I created something like this? Like, I've been writing books. I write books, dude. I write books. You know how many books I've sold in October? Two. I've got a total of $5.96 in commission. Right? But sometimes it's not about the money. Sometimes it's not about the money. you got to follow your heart. And, and people will say, don't walk that way. And you're like... It's the direction I'm going. Don't you 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 want you want that's not you you you're gonna get paid better for your time. You walk a different direction. I saw this movie. We're going on another roundabout. Hang with me. I saw this movie, uh, 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 Adventures at the End of the World. What is it called? Adventures at the End of the World. I guess that's what it's called. Adventures Encounters at the End of the World. It's called Encounters at the End of the World. And it's about all these uh, people who live down in the South Pole for research. And it just brings really smart, eclectic, weird people. Because they have to be really smart doctorates doing research down in the South Pole. And they also have to be a little bit eclectic and weird to say, yeah, screw civilization. I'm going to go live in the South Pole for nine months, two years with a bunch of other people in this small outpost and do research. All right? So it just kind of profiles the people in there. But one of the interesting things was the penguins 
you know, all do their big march. You've seen the March of the Penguins movie, but every now and then there's a penguin who just walks the wrong way. That's me. <laughs> and that penguin's going to his death, but he does so, like, with purpose, right? He's like, that's not the right way to go. You're not going to the ocean. The penguin's like, I'm going to see what's over these ridges. To hell with all you guys. I'm going to go this way, see what's out here. Yeah, so that's the point being is this is an amazing, awesome business idea right here. And I'm almost tempted to just create another one just like it, you know? And uh, I, I actually bought a domain. I bought this domain thinking, you know, it'd be cool to do something like that with this domain. I bought it a couple of years ago. But domains are so hard. We'll talk about domains in a second. Domains are so hard to come by that it's really, you have to be creative these days. Back in the day, you could buy any domain, any domain. You could buy, you could buy big company name domains, like in 98, 96, 97. Dude, when I was in grad school, I bought I bought some domains, you know, and uh, like I bought McClouds.com. You can't get that now. We'll talk about domains in a second. But I bought Hiyashi, Hiyashi, because it's like ah, there's no domains available, so I just made up a word, Hiyashi. You know what it stands for? It's a phrase my uncle used to say. Hip as shit. <laughs> hip as shit, man. It's Hiyashi. It's hip as shit. I thought, you know what? It'd be a website where I just list five things a day that are as hip as shit. All right? All right, cool. And then I'm making $10,000 a day. Woo! Tesla, here I come. Buy me a Tesla. Maybe. All right? I'm going to rule the world from my mom's basement. That's the path. This is the path. And you might just end up creating a web page that nobody ever goes to. Probably. Those are your odds. Because 70, uh, <laughs> odds are in favor of that. 70 domains get purchased. I can't remember if it's every minute or every 10 minutes. 70. Even if we say every 10 minutes, that's a hell of a lot of domain. It's a whole hell of a lot of new websites, you know, if they get developed. Every 10 minutes, 70. Might be every minute. It's crazy. Yeah, this is a website I created back in the day, 2004, 2005. All right, so how do we start doing a more sophisticated website? And really, we're going to talk about two things here. Oh, my God, you're kidding me. It's just getting good. You thought it's been good? It's, it's just now getting good. Oh, lovely. Oh, shoot, that entire time I haven't been. You, it's uh, Halloween, huh? You got to go? Yeah. What are you doing? I Get my daughter over. Oh. Okay, have fun. Alright, uh, you can watch it online. Okay. Some disappointment because I'm working camera angles here and that entire last spiel is focused on the screen. <laughs> I had the wrong camera angle, so I'm dealing with a little disappointment right now. It's passing. Alright. What the hell was I talking about? Two things. Two things. Front end, back end. All right? When you start talking about websites, what's the front end going to look like? Oh, and how are you going to do the back end? So those are like two different realms. And as you get into like big, bigger game, big game websites, big game websites, I just made that phrase up, uh, you're going to have different people doing each job. So the front end is going to be the graphic designers. All right, so let's make that look pretty. Let's make it look pretty. The user interface, the functionality. You know, what's it going to look like? How are people going to use it? Yahoo, Yahoo went for this approach. Yahoo went for this approach. What the hell? You know, what is this? Is like the People Magazine approach. There's just like a little bit too much going on for me. Okay, the approach Yahoo went for. Google came on after Yahoo, I think. My experience, they did. Google came on after Yahoo, and they went for this approach. Actually, it's not a very good example. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> right? But back in the day, I could go to archive, if I can spell, .org. I could go to archive.org, and there's a Wayback Machine, and I can say, hey, Google. I gotta actually go to www.google.com and it'll show me. Take me back, won't you? Take me back, won't you? 
Take me away. And then how it goes? Well, this. Take a... Wow, that's pretty cool looking. So I'd go back to 1998. Shoot, dude. That's right when I was finishing grad school. I should have gone up and joined them. Right, 1998, Google started. And here's the first impression, right? This is uh, the first impression that this archive source got of Google. It actually started in 95. This is what Google looked like. It didn't have that right there. It just said, what? Give me this one. There we go. That's what Google looked like back in the day. I'm going to get that out of the way. That was Google back in the day. Not impressed. Okay? Let's look at Yahoo. So that was like uh, 1998. Go way back! 1996, right? So Yahoo is there first. And what did Yahoo look like in the beginning? That was Yahoo. Categories. Oh, I need to go look for, or, or you could go to search. This is the website I created that helped get me my job. Oop, I need to go here. Clouds.com, 1999, did not have the success of Google. Pretty good. Right, so I was able to show this when I went for a job, and they're like, wow, you are really on it. Yeah, I am, you should hire me. You should pay me a lot of money. And they did. All right, so that's front end. Okay, so what's the design look like? It's huge just to have a good design. Here, you know, my mom's website, you think I created all that? No. No. I don't think that's within your skill range, Todd. And you'd be right if you're having that thought. Because uh, there's cheats. So you could go to places like Template Monster. <laughs> Template Monster. And you could say, hey, give me a cool front end. Wow, that's cool. Demo. Nice. Right? Le Bejou, la icon. And then I could, I could buy this and I could customize it. That's a sweet web page. How much does it cost me to buy it? How much do you think? How much? A couple thousand? How much? because they got a bunch of kids that they taught Photoshop and Flash in India or wherever working for three cents an hour making them. Uh, or, or actually they might just be people here in America making them. Uh, I guess I need to go like that. So you can just buy the front end. But then once you buy it, you're going to get all this code. you got to know what to do with it. So you got to know how to work with it. you got to have the software to work with it. It's difficult. So that's the front end. That's the front end. Used to be that websites were static. So here's another key phrase. Static versus dynamic. A static web page, a static web page would be like this. It's a static web page. And if I want this web page to change, I gotta go in and touch the, the, the page, make my changes, save it, and then the web page is different. Okay? So no matter how many times I look at this page, I can hit refresh, 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 over and over. Same page, it's the same page. Right? The next, next thing which is interesting is, uh, is that there are dynamic pages. Okay, so let's go to the home page for my mommy. Let's go to my mommy's home page. Look at her home page. And watch these two pictures here. 
Okay, you ready? You ready for the magic? You ready for the magic? Watch those two pictures. Let's zoom in on them so you really get the full effect. If I can work my keyboard. I wonder if it'll load right there. I don't think so. I think it's going to load top left. Oh, okay, you ready for the magic? Watch those two houses. <gasps> oh my god. Every time I come to this page, I get different houses. Oh my god, that's amazing. Okay, you hear Web 2.0, right? Like Web 1.0 didn't have a whole lot of dynamic websites. This was like, wow, every time I come to the page, dude, there's new information. It's amazing. So that's a dynamic website. And that means that I've got some more stuff going on in the back end, on the back end. Dynamic website. What's that mean, back end? Well, the front end is the graphics. The back end is the programming. So the back end would be, this is, this is like, this is like the back end right here, right? Like, okay, now, now this is not the stuff that people see when they come, the front end. They, don't, the, they see the front end. This is the back end. People don't see this. Right, this is all the coding, all the markup language to make it look nice, or to present things in a certain way, or to determine what is presented. You can put programming logic in. Programming logic. So that's the back end. And creating the back end is its own specialty. Okay? So now, how does, how does this all happen? How, how do you do websites? Well, you got to know how to create web pages. Like you just learned. And then after you've created, you know, uh, create web pages. Two, make it a little smaller. Create a web page by domain. Right? You have to buy a domain. That's the next thing you have to do. So to buy a domain, you want to go somewhere like, you can go to GoDaddy. They always advertise like during the Super Bowl or whatever. You can buy domains here. You could go to uh, Network Solution, NetSol, and they're the first ones to sell domains, Network Solution, so you could buy domains here. Or you could go to HostTech, which is the company I use, because they're smaller, and when I call them, I like their customer service, and I've been dealing with them for a long time. All right, so you can say, hey, buy... They, they'll buy your domain. You call them up, basically. And say, hey, will you buy this for me? They go, okay. Right? But in Network Solutions, you come in here and you can search for a domain. So let's say I've got a great idea for a business. You may got a great idea for a business. I'm trying to think what my last great idea for a business, which I didn't pursue, was. I had one idea that it would be cool if people could sell videos online. Where do you sell videos? I want to sell videos online. There's places to sell. Like TVs and stuff? More like educational training, you know? So it's like a training. A website that um, do you go to, you can buy games, just be able to buy books too, but um, they kind of stuff that I guess they're making so much money on that. But you go and like, you can trade in games or like, for money, I mean, you buy them and, and videos and CDs and do something. Yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of like uh, lynda.com, right? Like, can anybody, you know, if was if there was a resource like this where anybody could then upload a training, you know, like, uh, you know, they could then just say, you know, this person could upload a training and create little videos for their training and then charge $5 or $10. Here's access training, you know. But they already have such good training that you'd be competing with them. But, you know, was there, would there be a place that anybody could upload a series of videos in a training and say, here it is. Like, I could do videos for all of computer concepts, each little subject, and then sell those, and that could be sold instead of textbooks. Schools could adopt that and do those lectures, you know, for their classes. That was, that was my idea. So let's, let's say that's the idea. You know, what would I call it? Selling videos online, what would I call it? Right? See, it's it's a, it's a hard process, huh? Spin video. Spin like fast. S P I N. I like that. 
Spin vid. Spin video. Spinvideo.com. Come on, come on, baby. I feel lucky. I feel lucky. Come on, come on. I feel lucky. Red, number eight, number eight. Come on. Take it. Dot com, spin video, spin video dot com is taken. Ah! Spinvideo.com is taken. Somebody else come up with another one. Express vid. Express vid. Come on, I'm feeling lucky, baby. Come on, come on. Number. Dang it. <laughs> All right, let's come up with another one. It's taken. What videos for sale? Like the number four. Videos for sale. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Stop. <laughs> that one's available because it's stupid. <laughs> Videos for SLE. It's for a Mercedes. This, this website's videos for Mercedes only. Videos for sale. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling, feeling. Going, taking a long time. Feeling taken. So you gotta really come up with something. Right? So it might be like via uh, vid via Mia Moa. I don't know. Via Mia Moa. Whatever. Right? You say, Via Mia Moa, that sounds cool. Hey, it's available. Sweet. That's our, that's our business. Via Mia Moa. I just totally made it up. Right? Cool. What's it stand for? I don't know. Whatever. There's no good domains available. That's the one we bought. Via Mia Moa. It's Italian for learn through video. Really? No, I just made that up. That's how you do it. So you, the first thing you do is you buy a domain. So if you, what you want to do is go search for your name. Right? Go search for your name. And if it's available, buy it. Just buy it. It's 10 bucks a year or less. All right? Go to host tech, say, I want to buy my name. Can you park it for me? That's the phrase, park it. Can you park it for me? Buy it and park it. I want to buy it for 10 years. Buy your name for 10 years. It'll cost you 100 bucks or less. And just tell them to park it, which means they're holding it, and it's in your name. And that way, if in four or five years, you're like, oh, I want to be a realtor. Oh, I want to be a mortgage broker. Oh, I want to be a writer. Oh, I want to be a dancer. I want to be an actor. I want to be a musician. You know, like Bruce Springsteen owns BruceSpringsteen.com, right? And so you want to be able to own your name on the web. So go buy it. Because if you don't, there's another you out there who's going to, right? Because somebody already has Todd McLeod. You can actually come down here to Who Is? Who is search at Network Solution? Who is search right there? Who is search? And you can say, hey, who owns, who is behind that domain? Todd, ToddMcLeod.com. It ain't me. ToddMcLeod.com is owned by uh, McLeod Todd in Long Beach, right? Some dude named Todd McLeod in Long Beach, who happens to be a rock star, by the way. Not a very big rock star. But if we go look at that website, what has he done with it? Absolutely nothing. I've been coming here for years. <laughs> As an example of my classes, he's never done anything. He just owns it. In case someday he's big, he could then be like, yeah, I got my domain. All right? So me, I own T. Scott McLeod. I've emailed this dude. I've said, hey, man, we got the same name. Jerk. Took the domain. I didn't say that. I said, you're a rock star. That's totally cool. He's not a star. He's a rocker. Let's do that. So you buy your domain. That's step one. Okay? And then step two is uh, you need to find a host. Who's going to host your website? Because you're going to have to create the pages and everything, but you need somebody to host it. So you could you could try to figure that all out on your own, right? Like how to run, you know, uh, the web servers and everything, and connect them to the internet so that people can find them and they'll serve pages as people say go to that website. You could try to figure all that out and and get the hardware and install all the software after you bought it, and or you could pay them five bucks a month and they'll host your website on all their big computers where they manage it all for you. 
So you just hire a host. Somebody hosts your website. And so here's what the diagram looks like. There are, let's say, clients, people on the web, right? These are people browsing the web. And there are an infinite number of them. There's a whole bunch of them. So I put the number in up by his head, just like there's a whole bunch of them. Not official uh, schematics. I'm just creating this as I go. Uh, and then they all have an ISP. They have various ISPs, right? So, you know, that's how they get their internet service. So when they want something, they say, hey, I want to go to this web page. And so they talk to their ISP, their internet service provider, and they say, show me google.com, show me wimp.com, show me reddit.com. And then their web service says, sure, or their internet service provider says, sure, I'll get that for you. Right? And then their internet service provider talks to, <coughs> there are uh, servers on the internet called DNS servers. We already learned about these a little bit. Uh, anybody remember what DNS stands for? Don't know. Shh. No. Anybody know what DNS stands for? Okay, so if I go down to start and I go down to run and I say CMD, command line, and then when I'm here, if I type in ping mcclouds.com, right, 72.29.31.4. It gives me the IP address, the internet protocol address. That's the location, the actual location of the computer that is hosting this website, mcclouds.com, 72.29.31.4. So at mcclouds.com, if I instead type in 79.29, what was it? 79.29.31.4, what, what do you know? It takes me right to that web page. Right, so that's the that's the actual IP address. Every computer connected to the internet has an address, just like every house pretty much has an address. Right, so every computer connected to the internet has an address. Now you could have sub IP addresses. So Fresno City College, right, maybe has one address on the internet, but then within that address, we have all these individual addresses underneath it. So it'd be like you know, twelve twelve East. Sunset Boulevard, apartment 312. I'm getting too So, how, that's a, that's a hard way to remember a website, right? Dude, check out my website. Okay, what is it? 72.29.31.4. Alright, I'll try to remember that. Here, I'll write it down for you. 72.29.31.4. Here you go. Go look at it. Like, that's, that's not very catchy. So, people came up with domains. They said, oh, let's have domains, domain names, like uh, Hiyashi, like Google, like Yahoo, like Reddit, you know, oh, go to my website, it's Reddit, oh, sweet, I can totally remember that, Reddit, I'll go check it out. So when you type in mcclouds.com, show me mcclouds.com, they say, sure, no problem. Then they come to the DNS server, DNS stands for domain name server, and they say, what is mcclouds.com? Where is that located? And the DNS server says it's at 72.29.31.4. And then they go, okay, cool. And then they go to 72.29.31.4. Or whatever location on the internet that domain name just resolved to. All right. And when they hit that, they're actually hitting a real computer. And that computer is called a server because it in this client server architecture, right? All these people out here are clients, and then all these servers, the clients request things, and the servers serve things back to them, just like in a restaurant. So it hits a server there, and that server is a web server. Web server. Okay? And this web server is going to be running uh, maybe uh, IIS, IIS, which is a Internet Information Server, and I've been out of the game for a little bit, so I might be telling you stuff that's dated, all right? Or it might be running Apache, Apache Web Server. 
So those are two possible web servers that it could be running. If we actually look at host tech, right, Linux hosting, I'm just ASP, it doesn't say the web server here. It just assumes that that's given. Like, oh, here it is, Apache. So there's the web server. So it says Apache right there. I'm looking here to say, see if it says IIS. I'm pretty sure that that's what the .NET framework still uses, but I'm not seeing it. That's also how I ran the Cold Fusion. I don't see it there back in the day. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the web server. And the web server will then say, okay, well, you want the default homepage from mcclouds.com? Because you just said mcclouds.com, serve back the default homepage, and it's given back to the client. All right? And that is only going to be a static web page. So if I want to change content on that page, I got I to gotta change it and then upload it back. So if I am creating web pages, here I am. All right? All this stuff here is going to be run by, we're going to talk about a few more things here. All this stuff here is going to be run by my host. So you see all these different services that host tech offers. We're getting down the rabbit hole, right? It's getting a little bit furball now. Like, oh my god, okay, I'm, I like the beginning. Like, I can get my head around that. How many people still want to learn about this? Okay, all right. So, so you know, as a web developer, okay, I am wherever I am, and I create my web pages, and then I upload, I upload my web pages, usually via file transfer protocol, which is a way of put, like I can log into the web server, and it's as if I'm actually at that computer. And then I can drag files from my computer and just drop them right onto the web server. And then they transfer across. So as the web developer, via file, file transfer protocol, web developer, clients. Okay? The web developer, via file transfer protocol, I can load pages onto my web server, which then gets served to clients. So I get it, I, I just put the pages there, and then somebody goes to my website, and then they say, oh, I want to see clouds.com, and the default page gets sent. Apache, or Internet Information Server, knows how to send that default page. I don't have to worry about configuring that. That's somebody else wrote that software. You can figure it out, right? Like, oh, that makes sense. The computer knows how to do that. There's a lot of that in computers. Oh, the computer knows how to do that. I don't know how it's doing it. It knows how to do it. Well, it does. I didn't write that program. All right, so that will serve a static web page. So every time I want to change my web page, I have new information, I got to physically touch it. Oh, make this an anchor tag now. Upload that new page, and now that page is live and the world can see it. How do I make a dynamic website? How do I make a dynamic website? Well, now I need to bring in some programming logic, and that's called an application server, a web application server. And so I'm going to have some kind of an application server. And an application because now I can start creating applications, right, where it has functionality. It's not just here's the information, but there's functionality to it. There's functionality to it. And on this, on this application server, I can do programming. I could have, uh, uh, I could have pictures change randomly. So every time somebody comes back, it just randomly pulls two pictures from a pool of pictures, like you saw there. Some of the languages I could program this in that are out there, PHP is the biggest one. So if you're going to learn web programming, you should learn PHP. <laughs> There's also the .NET framework, ASP. Cold Fusion is old, not very popular. It's the one I learned, unfortunately, when the web was getting going. I chose the wrong one. But it's, it's, a, it's a nice language. All right, so you, you, PHP or .NET. Sometimes you see ASP. Sometimes you'll see file extensions on web pages, .ASP. All right, have you seen that? ASPX or .CFM. You saw on that one, I said, oh, we'll learn what that is. That's called Fusion Markup. 
or PHP, some PHP pages. Right. All right. So the last piece here that's being hosted is a, a database. A database. And there's a couple of flavors of databases out there. You could you could use Microsoft SQL Server. You could use MySQL. And you could use Oracle, which is expensive, and you could even use Access, which is not very robust by Microsoft. The most common one, the most common thing is use MySQL with PHP with Apache Web Server running an operating system of Linux. Linux is running across all that. The operating system is running across all that. This could all be on one computer. Right? Linux could be your operating system. This software could be running for your web server. This software could be running for your application server. This software could be running for your database. A database is, we're going to learn what databases are later in the class. A database is just where you store all your information. Store all your information in a database. So now, you know, I could do authentication with a database. What's your username and password? Somebody enters Tom Jones. And 13, 13, 12, I go, okay, is there a user named Tom Jones in my database? Yeah. Is the password 13, 13, 12? Yeah. Congratulations, you're logged in. Welcome, Tom. Last time you were here, and I can look, what was he looking at last time? He's looking at these things. Last time you were here, you're looking at these things. So now I can build in that logic into the page, authenticate people. Once they're authenticated, look up what they're looking at last time. If this was Facebook, and Facebook, by the way, runs PHP and MySQL, I think. Pretty sure it's PHP. At least it was when it started. If this was Facebook, it's like you log in, and then it's like, okay, who are all of your friends? Well, here are your friends, right? And then from, uh, from those friends, pull their posts and order them in sequential order, and pull the, the last 100 of those. Right? And now display those on the page in sequential order. And if somebody's posted twice, uh, only show their most popular posts. So you can start putting that logic in there. Wow, really into the fur ball now. We're really into the down the rabbit hole. But this is the basics. This is the path to you ruling the universe from your mom's garage. And by the way, if you do, even though I'm mocking it right now, you're damn right I want to be in the startup. If it starts going, you better come and get me and drag me in because I want to I wanna ride that baby as you have your IPO, your initial public offering, and you make your billions. I want my 0.3%. No. But seriously. <laughs> I do. So that's what you see here, right? Here's MySQL, right? So they have MySQL database. They're running Apache Web Server. And... Uh, it's PHP. And that's all the Linux operating system. Yeah, we're rocking it, dude. So that's the front end and the back end of website creation. That's the front end and the back end of website creation. So what's the back end look like? I could come to my mom's website, website, and I could go. Uh, mcclouds.com and I can type in a secret web page that nobody knows about and there's no link to and then it says hey what's your login information so now right I'm gonna it's gonna check my username and password against the database and I can put in bogus stuff and it'll say no nope. or I can try to remember what my username and password was and it'll say no nope. and I can try to remember again and it says yeah Hallelujah. And so now I can look at like site ad. Ooh, don't want to show that page. <laughs> I don't know why I built that. Stats. Hopefully that went quick enough that none of you got it. It's going to be in the Yeah, it's pretty far away, but I'll have to delete it out. Add that. What second are we at? We're near the end. 
So, you know, now, now my mom could go in here and she could like change this stuff, right? Your home, mission statement, experience, education. She could add new records. She could change the order of the records. She could delete records. She could update them. And what is all that stuff, you know, is uh, if you go to about, there we go, there's about. Your home, mission statement, experience, education, personal, call me. Your home, mission statement, experience. You know, I could insert a new record. And I'm going to put it at the bottom, order preference nine. I could say, great mom. And she's a great mom. Insert record. Right? Now that shows up down here at the bottom. Right? And I can now refresh this page. And, and great mom, and she's a great mom, right? But you know, for business, it's probably not the best. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna hit delete. Be sure you wanna delete this. And if I did everything right, and it's like, okay, this record, delete this record, and I don't have my wires crossed where I say, I think I'm deleting this record, but I actually deleted that record. I delete that, and okay, the great mom part's gone there, and is it gone here? And getting all that to work is a genius level feat. No, it's not. It just takes about nine months. In nine months, you can learn how to do all this. That's it. Nine months. But it's nine months, two to three hours a day. In nine months, two to three hours a day, you can create crap like this. You too can be creating crap like this. And you can be making good money. Right? You could do what a local kid did, which is uh, he started Sermon Spice where, you know, people are, uh, preachers can buy videos to make their crappy sermons a little bit spicier. I kind of think it's a weird name for a website because spice is kind of hot and there's a chili pepper and that kind of starts to do an association with me of the devil, right? <laughs> you know, like, really, do you want to make it spicy? How about, like, sermon fires of hell? Like, maybe that'd be the website. I don't know, but I also get what he's saying. So, you know, people upload videos to, uh, to uh, make their, you know, like, let's talk about Psalms 23 worship intro. You know, welcome to church, and here's a little video about, uh, you know, about Christ. So do they do stuff like this in church? They show videos before the sermon and stuff, and then, wow, church has really changed. I'm still not interested. Christian, Christianity. I, I had a grandfather. Just hang with me. We're going on that roundabout. My grandpa was a hellfire and brimstone, assembly of God, Pentecostal minister. Like, just as, as righteous and awesome. Like, let's, let's really get enthusiastic and energetic about Jesus as you can get. And I just got my fill when I was a kid. <laughs> I had enough of that. I like all religions now, you know? Like even Christianity, I do like Christianity. But I like it from a more mystical standpoint. Like metaphorically speaking, or all religions, right? Like what, what's the message that's between all of them? So that's, that's, I don't know why I went off on that take. But. So he started Sermon Spice here. Pretty complicated website. Right? And, uh, you know, even this sounds weird. Uh, this is a proud member of Salem Church Products. That makes me think of, like, Stephen King novels and witch burning. I don't know. But contact us. He also started another one. What's his name? Spacing on his other name. So how would I find out about this person, right? Well, I get my Sermon Spice domain here. How do I find out who owns this? Huh? That one website. Yeah, I go, who is? I just type in who is, and then I put in sermonspice.com. Oh, and now it's like, who is? Uh, who is domain tools? There we go. Let's see if this does it. And it's owned by Salem Communication. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome if it's Satan.
Communication Corporation. <laughs> just to really tweak with people. I think that'd be funny. Scott Hunter owns it. That's not the kid who I met. So maybe that's you know that's the administrative contact. So he's got it. He's got it kind of hidden where you don't know his information. Unlike me, I never figured that out. So you just see where I live. If you don't like my website, you can come knock on my door and tell me what you think about it because you're crazy. Um, all right. So that's a. Uh, that's front ends, that's back ends, back to main directory. I'm going to log out. You have logged out. Go home. That's, by the way, not good design anymore, having a little music on the home page. All right, so uh, there's all that web pages, websites, uh, front end, back end, servers, hosts, buying your domain, you know. Uh, last thing I want to share with you is there's a really cool piece of software. So this doesn't have to be super hard. There's something that can help you. And it's called Dreamweaver. And my colleagues who are the teachers in the web developer program, which they want me to jump back in and teach some of those classes, but I really like just this. I like this level. Um, it's what I prefer, but they, they, my colleagues who teach the web, they don't like Dreamweaver. They like just no. You, you got to be a purist. Let's let's code just by hand. Let's teach you the basics, and uh, and you'll know what you're doing then. But I, I think Dreamweaver is pretty cool because it's a drag and drop environment. It's a wissy wiggy. What you see is what you get. So you just build the page visually, and it writes all the code for you. And you can even do that on two windows. So as you're building it visually, you can see the code that's being written. And, and then you can start to learn the code just by what the computer's writing. Oh, when I put in a hyperlink, it drops in the anchor tag, you know? And so uh, Dreamweaver is a piece of software that allows you to <coughs> graphically just kind of build web pages. Adobe actually has an entire web developer suite. So solutions, web experience management, you might jump in on that, you know? and. Uh, they got videos here to tell you about it. But um, uh, the last thing I'll show you is Lynda.com, which we already saw. So if you're really like fired up, got so enthused, I, I just like totally ran out of energy. Like I'm like, wow, I was doing great. It's so enthusiastic now. I'm just completely done with this talk. But if you're fired up, if I got you fired up, you want to become the master of the universe from 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 your mom's garage. Right? You're going to rule the world, which maybe you will. $10,000 a day, dude, because you're getting a million visitors. Wow, awesome. I don't know what you'd get paid for that, actually. But um, Then you could come here and you could go to, hey, I want to learn by subject. And you could go to W. And they have all kinds of things about web design. Right? You could go to software and you can learn about Dreamweaver. Look, they got 62 different classes. 62 different classes. Now, that's going back to the day, right? 17 beginner classes. Right, and then uh, and then you know you could learn CS6, which is the new one, creating a first website with Dreamweaver CS6. This is 25 bucks a month. It's a two-hour, 48-minute training, and then you could watch the the. I wish this would stop. Then you could watch the nine-hour and uh, nine and a half-hour training, the essential training. So in 12 hours, like you could knock this out in a week. You know, uh, two hours a day, watch it, practice it. Uh, in a week, you could be creating really nice web pages in Dreamweaver. Like, not blow me away web pages, but no, that's functional. You could definitely create web in a week. And you buy your domain, you get a host, and you're just putting links to videos, and you sell a little advertising. Hmm. You can be rocking it. What's up? I would say the um, reason why I know a little bit about this is my brother in law. He's just Dreamweaver and CS6, so if you want to check out the website, it's like everything is built on Dreamweaver. Let's see it. It's a Divine Designs Pro. Divine Designs Pro. Com. He makes custom graphics and websites, but he builds he builds everything based off of Dreamweaver. So this is it. Is this yeah. it? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's pretty nice. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run 
that readeth it. I just don't even know what that means. Why would, I don't know, why would you want to run if you read it? Yeah, so uh, buy one website, services, client reviews, portfolio. Client reviews, the Bulldog book, portfolio. So he does some graphic stuff, websites. So you got a big jump up, dude. You just come up with an idea and you make your brother build it. And you're like, no, I'm the business, dude. I'm like Steve Jobs. You're Steve Wozniak. You stay in the room, you write the code, and I'm out talking to people and making the business happen. Every now and then I'll come back and really beat you up and shame you. Steve Jobs. All right, the end. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed class. It's a pretty big subject to conquer. Uh, we'll talk about Chapter 11 terms a little bit in the dot-com boom, maybe, on what? What day will that be? That will be uh, Tuesday, no, Monday next week. I uh, hope you enjoyed this lecture. I'm going to leave you with uh, Leonard Cohn singing Hallelujah.